All right, that book nine got cut off at the very end, but I figured since you said just give the recap, you're not too worried about it. So page 142, Alcinius just continues to demand that Odysseus tells who he is and what happened to him that grieves him so terribly over the archives and the fall of Troy. Um, was it some relative of yours that died there? Somebody that you were married to, a companion? You know, if your friend or brother, just tell us what happened. So moving on then to book nine, New Coast and Poseidon's Son. We finally get to the Odyssey, what happened to Odysseus. So uh, page 145. Now this was the reply Odysseus made. Alcinius, king and admiration of men, how beautiful this is to hear a minstrel gifted as yours, a god he might be singing. There is no boon in life more sweet, I say, than when a summer joy holds all the realm and banqueters sit listening to a harper. In a great hall, by rows of tables heaped with bread and roast meat while a steward goes to dip up wine and brim your cups again, here is the flower of life, it seems to me. But now you wish to know my cause for sorrow and thereby give me cause for more. Okay. So what Odysseus has said is there's nothing better than listening to a good story and having a good meal. Then he says, you want to know my cause of sorrow? This will actually give me greater sorrow. Okay. What shall I say first? What shall I keep until the end? The gods have tried me in a thousand ways. But first my name, we'll let that be known to you. And if I pull away from pitiless death, friendship will bind us, though my land lies far. I am Laertes' son, Odysseus. Men hold me formidable for guile and peace and war. war. This fame has gone abroad to the sky's rim. Okay, so Odysseus just makes a very strong statement about himself. He is a dangerous enemy because of his cunning and his crafty deceptions. And right away, he reveals this part of his character to Alcinius. Page 146. My home is on the peaked sea mark of Ithaca, under Mount Nian's wind-blown robe of leaves, in sight of other islands, Dulichion, Same, wooded Zacanthus, Ithaca, being most lofty in that coastal sea and northwest, while the rest lie east and south. Okay, so if you're trying to kind of picture this in your mind, Ithaca is in the northwest, and these other islands that he named were east and south of Ithaca, and Ithaca is the highest, the most mountainous with peaks. So it's above the other islands. A rocky isle, but good for a boy's training. I shall not see on earth a place more dear, though I have been detained long by Calypso, loveliest among goddesses who held me in her smooth caves to be her heart's delight. As Circe of Aea, the enchantress, desired me and detained me in her hall, but in my heart, I never gave consent. Where shall a man find sweetness to surpass his own home and his parents? In far lands, he shall not, though he find a house of gold. All right. So he mentions Calypso and Circe, who held him captive. This is kind of interesting. This is a point that we could definitely argue about. But in my heart, I never gave consent. So he goes to bed with these goddesses. It kind of says they forced him to. But in his heart, he never gave consent. So was he faithful to Penelope or not? That's a question that many scholars have argued over. Makes for a good essay, too, if you're looking for a topic. All right, uh, line 41-ish. 
What of my sailing then from Troy? What of those years of rough adventure weathered under Zeus? The wind that carried west from Ilion brought me to Ismeros on the far shore, a strong point on the coast of the Cicones. All right, here is where we're going to need to insert a new slide as we keep track of all the things that he does. So first he leaves Troy and he went west from Ilion to Ismaros. And this was a strong point on the coast of the Kikones. And he fought there. So they killed the men. Mm, I'll Thomas killed the men, enslaved the women, took plunder. Okay. Um, plunder we took and we enslaved the women to make division equal shares tall. But on the spot, I told them back and quickly out to the sea again. My men were mutinous, fools on stores of wine. Sheep after sheep, they butchered by the surf and shambling cattle. Feasting while fugitives went inland, running to call to arms the main force of the Kikonis. Okay, so here's where the trouble is. Odysseus senses trouble and orders his men back. But instead, they are greedy and start butchering. In that time, some fugitives slip away and get help from inland. All right. This was an army trained to fight on horseback or where the ground re required on foot. They came with dawn over that terrain like the leaves and blades of spring. So doom appeared to us, dark word of Zeus for us, our evil days. My men stood up and made a fight of it, backed on the ships with lances kept in play. From bright morning through the blaze of noon, holding our beach, although so far outnumbered. But when the sun passed toward unyoking time, then the Achaeans, one by one, gave way. Six benches were left empty in every ship that evening when we pulled away from death and this new grief we bore with us to see. Our precious lives we had, but not our friends. No ship made sail next day until some shipmate had raised a cry three times for each poor ghost unfleshed by the Kikonis on that field. Okay, so what ends up happening is... Kikoni warriors come and battle, and many die. And now this is a repeated theme throughout the Odyssey. There's grief and sorrow over lost comrades. All right, I'm going to need a new slide, aren't I? Boom. Um, I should have done it the easier way. Okay, so that's kind of the first adventure that takes place. So now we're on page 147, the second chunk of writing. Now Zeus, the lord of cloud, roused in the north a storm against the ships and driving bales of squall, moved down like night on land and sea. The bows went plunging at the gust, sails cracked and lashed out strips in the big wind. We saw death in that fury, dropped the yards, unshipped the oars, and pulled for the nearest lee. Then two long days and nights we lay offshore, worn out, sick at heart, tasting our grief, until a third dawn came with ringlets shining. Then we put up our masts, hauled sail, and rested, letting the steermen and the breeze take over. Okay, so Zeus made a big storm, kind of like to drive the point home. And then finally, third day was beautiful. I might have made it safely home that time, but as I came round Malia, the current took me out to sea, and from the north, a fresh gale drove me on past Kithera. Okay, so he almost made it home, but a strong wind took him past Ithaca, and uh, he went too far. 
went too far west. Poor guy. <laughs>